Do you mind if I interject? Hey? I say, do you mind if I make an interjection? We'd welcome it. It's just that I heard you talking about T.S. Eliot a little bit earlier this evening. Oh, you heard that, did you? I did. And I thought you might be interested to know that my grandfather knew T.S. Eliot quite well. Really? I'm not saying he's a close friend of yours. But he's a damn sight more than a nodding acquaintance. He knew them all, in fact. Ezra Pound, W.H. Wharton, C. Day Lewis, Louis McNeese, Stephen Spender, George Barker, Dylan Thomas. And if you go back a few years, he was a bit of a drinking companion of D.H. Lawrence, Joseph Conrad, Ford Maddox Ford, W.B. Yeats, Aldous Huxley, Virginia Woolf, and Thomas Hardy in his dotage. My grandfather carving out a niche for himself in politics at the time, some sort of as a future a Chancellor of the Exchequer, or at least First Lord of the Admiralty, but he decided instead to command a battalion in the Spanish Civil War. But as things turned out, he spent most of his spare time in the United States, where he was a very close pal of Ernest Hemingway. They used to play gin rummy together until the cars came home. But he was also boon compatriots with William Faulkner, Scott Fitzgerald, Upton Sinclair, John Dos Passos, you know, that whole vivid Chicago guy. Not to mention John Steinbeck, Erskine Caldwell, Carson McCullers, and other members of the old Deep South conglomerate. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that as a man, my grandfather was just about as all round as you can get. He was never without his pocket Bible, and he was a dab hand at pocket billiards. He stood four square in the center of the intellectual and literary life of the tens, twenties, and thirties. He was James Joyce's godmother. <laughs> Have you been working here long? <laughs> yes. You're going to stay until it changes hand? Are you suggesting that I'm about to get the boot? Oh, they wouldn't do that to a nice lad like you. To be brutally honest. I don't think I'd recover if they did a thing like that. <laughs> this place is like a womb to me. I prefer to stay in my womb. I strongly prefer that to being born. I don't blame you. This next time we're talking about T.S. Eliot, we'll drop your car. You would make me a very happy man. Thank you. Thank you. You are incredibly gracious people. How sweet of you. Gracious and graceful. <laughs>